for turning back in. My name is Fonny. In my channel, I talk about my houseplant and my Hoyas. Today, it is an episode of House Tour. I know a lot of you are interested in this type of content, but I try to make a house tour every season. So then I made one for winter, I made one for spring and summer. Now it is autumn 2022. I would like to show you the growth that I spotted in October, November time. And I also want to show you the plant that is potentially not looking the best. So you will see a variety of different plants that I have. I did not show every single plant that I have in my apartment because it would take very, very long time. But I know that this is going to be a relatively long video as well, but I wish you enjoy the content. And if you like this type of content, before you forget, don't forget to hit that like button and share this video with your friends. And also don't forget to subscribe to my channel before you move on. Well, Without further ado, let's take a look at a close-up of all of the plants in autumn. Today is finally a day with sun. I figure out I'm going to show you the autumn update of all of my, or most of my house plant. We can start with this huge Monstera over here. This one is Monstera Deliciosa. I have shown you this one multiple times and I'm very happy to tell you that it is still growing. Last time I showed you there was a new leaf coming out and this is the latest leaf that come out from the caterpillar. The leaf size you can see that is the same as this one on the right hand side. This is a leaf that I I think this is the first leaf that pushed out in the beginning of 2022 and ever since then the leaf pushed out is relatively the same size it is because i did not put it right next to the window but it has around i would say around two meters distance from the south facing window so it's not having direct sun but in fact it has i would say direct but not as strong as the one right next to the window but you can see that the fenestration is amazing it doesn't have a third layer of fenestration like the first uh, few leaf that i got when i purchased it it is because when i purchased it the seller placed it in a very very bright spot and this is a leaf that i bought from so you can see that there are third layer or even fourth layer of fenestration unfortunately i don't have enough space to put them in the highest light condition but i'm still very happy with the fenestration it has and um, if you see this one it also have a lot of holes just that the holes is not as uh, dense and um, i would not expect any new leaf coming out from this new growth point because now it is autumn it does not normally push out a lot of new leaf during colder months first is because i don't have a heater particularly turned on right now so the coldest um, time i would say it would be around 16 even 15 sometime in the room environment and i stopped putting up the humidity i mean humidifier these days because it rains a lot during autumn time and most of the time it would be around um, I would say 50 even so i don't turn on any humidifier yet but uh yeah under that condition i am not expecting a new growth point pushed out during autumn time i will let you know uh, in maybe a video or maybe on instagram update if a new leaf pushed out during autumn or even winter month and next to it, it is also a Monstera. This one is Monstera Elbow 
variegated. These are the three existing leaves that included when I have this cutting last year. And you can see that this has turned out to be very, very tall. Because it is a side cutting, that's why the leaves is just now slowly going bigger and um, there is the latest leaf facing into the wall. I uh, don't really have the time to extend the um, pole. This one is the Lazy Moss Pole from Charmaine. I, uh, I just don't know how to figure this one out because it looks like it's still kind of sizing up and I don't have enough space to make it like a moss ball all the way up. It looks quite nice. Now, this one is the most variegated leaf so far. If you look into more detail, there's a big chunk of white over here. And each time it pushed out different density of um, variegation. This one is almost, I would say, actually it's fully green, but then the new one pushed out is variegated. I believe the next one coming up would be a bit variegated as well because you see that white point over there. But all in all, this is just this monstera corner. It's a lot of big leaves over here. Oh, I did not remember to show you this one. This one is the tree fern, um, but it is a small form. Um, not small form, but I bought it when it is like a juvenile form. But uh, I would say this grows a lot. If you see this one here, I remember at the time when I bought it, it's just this size. This is around maybe eight month or nine month old. It pushed out so many new leaves and it gives this extra um, Jurassic vibe because tree fern is known to be a plant that has existed since many, many years ago. Tree fern has a very specific watering schedule. As you can see, I have made a very dense layer of moss on the top, and I also use Lechuza Pond. I also use the self-watering pot, but for fern, particularly this particular genre, it really needs a lot of water. You almost need to water it, um, well you need to keep the soil substrate moist every single day. Otherwise these very very small tiny pointy leaf will dry up without a question. As you can see over here these ones are the brown tip. Even though the other ones looks very healthy on the same leaf because that particular day it missed some water ring. It just browned off. And as you can see, this is another example. It doesn't take too long for it to brown off like this. It could be just one day of lack of moisture in the soil substrate. But as you can see, this makes it very nice as a landscaping plant because of the very drastic histor historic look. Together with the Monstera, it just gives this really nice combination of the vibe over here. Then we move on to the one below. This one, it used to put in my meals bow cabinet, but I I ran out of space, so I need to put this out. And um, yeah, this one is Hoya Sombalis. It also named as Mini Cantiana, or it has uh, a session number I can show you on the screen as well. This one here is 
really really compact when it comes to the growth pattern i remember when i got this one it is um pretty weak because it does not have um a lot of root so basically this one i remember it's around five cutting that i just randomly pop into this lechuza pom and um over five months it has already fill up the pot um, and you can see that these ones over here is very very sun stressed because you see that the edge is almost purple dark purple and then you see on the other side these ones are very green first of all it's because it's a new leaf second of all it has less direct uh, light from the Millsbow cabinet that's why in the middle you can see these ones are relatively green and it's super super thick as well you can see that on the side and this is the strand that's just exposed to the light blast it directly on top like here mostly so that's why it has a lot of sun stressing i'm not too worried to put it in this particular location because it still receives some direct light uh, in the morning but uh, I just need some more space in the meals bone cabinet then we move on to this one over here this one is the philodendron that I have purchased this I have purchased from we love aeroids um, I don't think there's a big issue of this plant acclimating. Um, I have potted it in Lechuza Pong, just that um, the leaf is not growing bigger as of today. These ones are all the existing leaf that comes with. This is the new leaf that pushed out after acclimation and the latest leaf is currently working on so i would say this plant takes time to go to the mature form don't know how long it will take me to see the mature form but uh, so far the leaves are very very healthy just that it's not sizing up very quickly unfortunately here you already have a quick peep this one is the variegated banana I suspect the reason why it dried up like this for all of the leaf is because it uh, could be. Firstly, um, underwatering, and then it just did not come back, particularly now it's not warm enough, the sun is not strong enough. And also I suspect there are some spider mites um, attacking this plant because you can see that the leaf is extremely thin on the side so I suspect it is because of spider mite the leaf here it's still kind of stiff so I don't think this plant is dying right now and also the stem it's not mushy at all it's just that it's winter time it takes extra effort for it to push out a new growth point that's why it just did not push out new leaf anymore. But uh, what I will do is I will just keep this um, less moist in the soil substrate because maybe the root is a bit rotten, um, but I'll just keep it like this. Unless this whole thing mushed up, then I will unfortunately classify this one as dead. But it's, it's not because it's still kind of stiff um, at least on the stem and also on this one here. The good news is I bought a secured plant. I bought two in total. This, another one that I bought, is looking good. You can see that this particular variegation is very even. So it is a very good kind of combination for the plant to continuously grow. The reason, another reason I forgot to mention about this is it has a lot of sectoral um, half moon situation going on so a large chunk of leaf are pure white except for this one but for this one over here the variegation is very well mixed 
that's the reason why it supports the plant much better and it's easier to take care of. This one also has spider mite um, attack. I spray alcohol on it very, very carefully because this is extremely thin. Any kind of chemical solution, if it's too dense, staying for too long, it could harm the plant so bad that it will brown off in that part. And this one over here, it is a very, very healthy one. You can see that it barely have uh, any browning except for there. Most of the time the browning start on pure white area. And uh, this is an example that I want to show you. I was trying to remove the spider mite and I just not gentle enough, I broke the leaf. Uh, that's why for variegated banana, it even it is a banana tree. It is not that uh, tough. It is very, very fragile. As, and you can also see that new, that little strand over there. That's the tip of the new leaf that comes out from the middle. So for banana tree, the growth point is it only push out one leaf at a time and all of the time it will come out from the middle part over there. And interestingly, the banana tree will kind of dry up the older leaf. As you can see, I have removed some older leaf from there. So the growth pattern is very uh, simple. Um, that's also the reason why the shape of the banana tree is very attractive because it grows vertically. It doesn't have a lot of offshoot on the side. It only grows upward and grows more leaf. Then let's move a little bit on top here before we move on the, to the colorful one. This one is for Lidendron elegans. This has um, spider mite attack. Um, however, it is growing strong, just that the leaf is not sizing up. You can see that this one is one of the original leaf. This is another original leaf. And these are all new leaf that pushed out. This one, you can see that the um, the split is quite a lot, just at the size, it's not very big. This one is the first new leaf that pushed out, and then this is the second new leaf that pushed out. And now a new leaf is working on its way. Hopefully this one is going to be a little bit bigger but as long as it's growing, I'm not complaining because it looks very nice um, on the landscape perspective. Having different layer of plants, you have the ones that is in the shape like this together with the, um, together with the variegated banana shape and also coloration and then move up. You have this finger-like leaves together with the one on the side. This one is Monstera Esqueleto. At the time when I get it, it is a very healthy plant, but again, it has spider mite attack. And I realized that, um, well, I realized relatively quickly that the spider mite attack on Esqueleto is quite bad because you can see that, um, I don't know if you can see it here, but there are some kind of marking very quickly. And you can see it on this leaf as well. These ones are pretty obvious pest attack. I have not removed this leaf because when I checked, I don't see any black. Maybe there is, maybe these are. Yeah, actually there is a black dot. I'll just treat it. I'll wash my hand after touching this leaf as well. Um, so this one here is having some pest issue. All right, now I have washed my hand and also tried to remove all of those black dot that I have spotted. Um, I tried my best to kind of remove the pest, but you just need to always keep an eye with the, on your plant. Here you can see that is obviously spider mite damages. But the good news is that I have chopped this one into around three parts because it's a huge, uh, plant and also there's a lot of internode being uh, a bare stem 
and I chopped it into, I think, three, as I mentioned. They are multiple new growth point. As far as I know, this is a new leaf that is pushed out from a side node cutting. And also you can already see that a new leaf is coming out from there. Uh, yeah, so I'll just need to wait until the light is not as intense and then I'll spray another layer of neem oil. Then we move on to the left hand side. This one is Philodendron longulobatum. This is still a very juvenile form, but you can already see that it is very narrow. Um, I know that there is another uh, subspecies or maybe another clone of longulobatum that has a very um, different look to it. I hope that this will grow like that, but uh, I suspect it will but uh, this is the latest leaf that you can see it's very soft and it's also very lime green color and you can see that there the growth point is very very compact um, so I really like this one it looks super cute and the shape is just just a little bit different from the um, golden dragon but uh, it's more narrow and pointy i would say and uh, let's look at the colorful one down here these are my favorite for a very long time this is the philodendron florida beauty this was the latest leaf that pushed out and because of some pest damage i believe on the right hand side there the split did not uh, manage to grow when uh, it is in the caterpillar but look at this variation i never thought of having a variegated plant with this much variegation but still growing healthily um the reason why this leaf is still standing really strong i believe it's because of the chunks of green on the same leaf. This is a large chunk of green. Let me change the angle so you can see it under the sun. And this one on the side, it is the leaf before this one. It is almost, almost fully variegated. I was really scared because all of the variegated, fully variegated leaf has all dropped off. You don't see it here anymore. But this one, it is very cream, but because it has some layer of green, it is still standing still and staying strong. There is a new leaf coming up. This one here, hopefully from the observation of the stem, I really hope this one is not a fully variegated one. I'll be really sad if that's the case. I need to make sure that this clear thing doesn't cut the new leaf. I'll uh, have a look at that after filming this video. These ones are, I think this is the second leaf that pushed out. And this is the very exciting one that I wanna show you. This is Philodendron polypoidioides. It is so, so fragile in the look rice but it's not that fragile in reality it is so beautiful it looks very similar to the shape of um, the philodendron florida beauty but it's in a much more narrow form so as you can see here this one is very close to the look of tortum but then tortum is very different because it's very thick in tortum but this one is more close to the shape of Florida Beauty just in a very very extreme way you can see the midrib is extremely thin and you have a lot of split on the side this is the second latest leaf I'm going to show you the most exciting one recently I've seen show you over here this one is the newest leaf that pushed out. You see how large it has turned into. The first leaf that I got 
I would say it's around this size. When I got it in the box um, in summertime or springtime, it is around this size. But um, as you can see, it is already doubled the size, if not more, because this one is a soft leaf still. And I have this one just unfurled maybe a week ago and I can still feel the softness, which means that this one potentially will grow a little bit bigger. But just from the look at itself, it's so delicate, yet very strong. It's a very easy going plant. It's not difficult when it comes to watering, when it comes to warmth. It's just right next to the south facing window. Very often it goes down to 15. And this light is just not always there. Nowadays, it's always raining, but you can see that a large leaf has pushed out and I'm very, very satisfied with this one. And I think this one as well, the Philodendron Fuller de Beauty, it's constantly sizing up. The first leaf there, when it has, uh, when it cuts on the stem, it is a side cutting. And this one there you can see, and then that one, is the second new leaf and then this one is the third leaf and that one behind is the fourth leaf and the size has already grown maybe 50 percent so i am very hopeful when it comes to the sizing speed of florida beauty and also this one polypoidioides it is wonderful and look how many leaves there is but because it's so thin it doesn't feel like it occupies a lot of your space which is perfect i really really don't have enough space <laughs> let's move up a little bit all of the hoyas that you can see that's uh, a lot of hoyas so let's start with this one closest to me this one is Hoya Carmele. You can see the shape is very, very round. And this one, because it has a direct light all the time, these ones are all deep purple in color. And it tried to push out some peduncle, but it didn't end up continue growing. So I hope it will one day. This one at the back is Breviolata. Um, you can see that the leaf itself is very rounded. It's very different from the ones that I got from. I think I, the first few leaves that I got is not as um, attractive. You can see that the earlier leaf here, it's just curled inwards. I suspect there are some issues, but I just keep on watering it. And uh, eventually it pushed out these very nice rounded leaves. I also suspect there is a stem that is drying up. That's why you see that these wrinkle leaves are one of the stem that is dying off. But this stem that I'm showing you with a lot of nice leaves, it's uh, up and coming. It's still growing so much. You see this vine growing backwards. Then we'll move down to this plate over here. I know there's a lot of mealy bugs in this one. I'm not going to touch it. This one is Rantundi Flora. Even though it has a lot of mealy bugs, I feel like mealy bug is not as terrible as a pest as long as you keep the population low it is still pushing out so much growth i think it has probably tripled the size since i bought it but you can see that the leaf it's very succulent and then it has a lot of vine so i just basically kind of attach it to the frame of this one here this one is such a beautiful one. This one is Hoya GPS 735. It has amazing, amazing coloration. I thought it's only the flower being extremely pretty. If you look into the leaf, because it is constantly in strong light, it has this very light rose color. Maybe this is easier to show you. And it's super thick. Because of the succulent leaf um, nature. It doesn't need to be water as much. Oh, actually, it's just here that I can show you really, really close up. The coloration is absolutely beautiful. And then let me try to turn. That one is Sigillatis because it is constantly in 
direct light condition, you can see that the coloration is very uh, red and with a lot of splash. And the one at the back there is a slightly unhappy um, Hushkeliana green. It has happy leaves, maybe like these ones. It's a bit wrinkly. I, I don't know why, but there are some healthy ones. Maybe I will end up chopping a couple and then restart that uh, plant. It just, it's just not uh, growing that well. I don't know why. It's still pushing out. You can, it's still pushing out some peduncles, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll have a look at that one, unfortunately. And uh, Kanyan Kumariana over there. It is working on a new bud, if you can see um, that peduncle. I feel like Kanyan Kumariana is not as easy to have the bud continuously growing. I have multiple buds dried up and um, just dropped off after this stage of bud. Well, fortunately I've seen it uh, and I have made a recording of the flower, but it's not as easy to flower in uh, my condition. Maybe it's not enough sun because it has some blockage. I'm not sure. Let me know in the comment box below if you have an idea. Ooh, this one is something that I really want to show you. Very exciting. This one is Hoya numenoreoides. I have mentioned that numenoreoides has not flowered under my condition, but ever since this autumn started, it has countless, I really mean countless, peduncle on each stem. And if you look at it here, it's, there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, it's really, really big peduncle. I'm sure that this year, uh, maybe soon, in a couple of weeks, I will be able to see and smell the flower of Numeloreoides. Just keeps growing so much. Expect a Hoya Bloom series to happen. And uh, yeah, this one here is Hishkliana variegated. It is very healthy, I'm happy about that. Um, unlike the green form, it is not having any of them shriveled up. Uh, yeah, and then this one at the back. Let me try to focus. This one is serpent. It's still growing a lot, and you can see a lot of buds coming out. But uh, serpent is not as easy to flower in my experience. And I also have the seed pods. A lot of you have been asking, how's the seed pot going? It is going strong. But look, I, I have this plastic bag, I guess a month and a half ago. I thought it's going to open because it has been like this for, I don't know, like two and a half months now, but it's still doing nothing, but it's still attached to the peduncle. So I'll just keep waiting. And uh, I will definitely make a recording of the seed pot growth uh, update if I ended up having these seed pots open up. But it is a healthy plant, um, as you can see, serpents over there. This one is the golden dragon, the Lidendron golden dragon. As I mentioned, this one is very similar to the shape of Longulobatum, but this one is much wider. As you can see here, instead of this very, very thin, long yellow bottom midrib. So move back here. So on top of this one is the amazing, amazing Biliate. It has a lot of new leaf. I can show you the new leaf that I have seen. The new leaf is over here. It's very smart. Just looking to maximize the light capture because this is just next to the window. And uh, yeah, that entire stem just go all the way directly to the sun. This is still very young. As you can see, it's very floppy. It's very thin. It is pushing out quite elongated leaf instead of wide leaf lately. Because this one was the last new leaf that has pushed out. It is very elongated compared to the one that pushed out. This one is the second new leaf that pushed out. It is much wider. And um, on the top there, 
you can see the UPI. Uh, let me try to get a better look. UPI is Love and Life. You see that? That one is the latest leaf that I pushed out after I received it from Het Plant in Pentia. It is such a beautiful plant. I, I love this plant so much. I repotted it into a pond and then I inspected the roots. Extremely healthy. And you can see that there is a new growth coming up right there. It's just a very nice wall I try to create, as you can see here. Well, the main reason why I make a wall right here, not just because it looks really good, because I wouldn't have too much things on the floor and um, I can maximize the vertical space. So then I can have more space for my Hoyas. Yeah, essentially that's the reason. This one over here is Thai Constellation. It's growing really nicely. This one has always been like this since it has dried up. So it's nothing deteriorating, but as you can see, this is a fully variegated side. It's a sectorial, I would say it's half moon. It was really, really beautiful at the time when it opened up, but it's not a good idea to have half moon. Same as here, you see that that entire half has gone because it has browned off over time. And I can try to stand up and show you the latest leaf. This one here is the latest leaf. The size is larger. I, th I would say it's the largest. I'm very happy about this um, large chunk of cream but see I've done nothing I've done nothing wrong this still wrongs me because it is fully variegated it just can't photosynthesize and it can't make food and for the plant they just need to choose the useful one that makes food which is the green with splashes so the green with splashes is always really healthy as you can see for example this one this leaf stays like this for a year already. And this is the first leaf that comes with the plant. It's still very, very new. It's, honestly, it just looks like the, the, the condition when it first arrived last year. So if I am getting variegated plant again, I would definitely prefer variegation that is more like this having a combination instead of a very huge chunk of variegation. Um, and, oh, I didn't know that until now. There is a new growth point that is pushing out. Oh my God. I did not expect a new leaf will come up in autumn time. This one looks like a very nice leaf with less of a huge chunk of white. It, it looks quite mixed together. Oh my God. Sorry, I, I got speechless for a second. I'm very happy about that. Um, it also proved that this is a very ha happy plant, even in uh, what? In autumn time is pushing out new growth. Incredible. Plants always surprise you, don't they? All right, let's focus on this side here. Um, I'm going to show you this one before I move on to the hanging Hoyas. This one here is Philodendron Sindadu Gold. As I have showed you many times before, did not expect this plant to be this big. It's a bit too big to be fair. I don't have enough space for it to grow even more. You can see that behind the light, it is so beautiful. The coloration is exactly like what its name is. It's gold. It's like super lime green. And this one has been attacked by uh, thrips, uh, I think last year. I managed to battle the thrips and um, it's almost free. I think it's free of thrips now. And um, it just keep pushing out new growth over and over again. And you see that these, this leaf here is um, slightly younger. That's why this one is lighter color than this one. And there is a new leaf coming out very, very green, or I would say very, very lime green color has just never stopped growing. Then move to this part here. 
It is a new arrangement because I placed some of the Hoyas out from the Mealsburg cabinet. I need more space for small plants. That needs to be a little bit more babysitted. But uh, these plants are doing pretty good, uh, even outside. Um, I have additional light. Uh, that's the aquarium light that I have. But I switch it off because I don't want to have that kind of um, shaky light situation that's why i switch off the light i'm going to show you these one by one this one over here is campanulata that i got from elderby garden i chopped it into multiple stem and now it is a very very large plant it has at least two to three growth point and so far, um, it is continuously growing. As you can see, this is the new tip that is pushing out. Also, that part has pushed out a new leaf. And then also the new guinea ghost here. New guinea ghost has very, very beautiful backside. It, you probably didn't know about that. Camilla told me about that. It's not only the front side that is extremely beautiful. Look at that purple. Oh my god it's just like a shiny purple with silver undertone it's the back that is so pretty the back has so complex combination of different layers of color and combined with this oh my god i think everyone needs to hoya new guinea ghost it's so it's the coloration is unreal it looks like a fairy tale, especially this one. Wow. This one at the back is Caspatagii. Um, it has grown too big. I need to bring it out so then I can spare some more space. And then here is um, Apoda. I brought it out uh, because I have another Apoda in the Millsville cabinet. I just take this one out. So, so then I can have two different ones growing in two different locations and uh, spare some space essentially and it is growing um you can see behind that leaf there was a new growth point let me try to put it down yeah there you go then this one here is hoya pang choy it is not a very easy one even in the millsbo cabinet i suspect is because the millsbo cabinet is too warm and too bright for it that's why it has really nice uh, sun stress coloration as you can see here but it doesn't really grow fast so i decided to put it out and hopefully it will continue grow i can see that there's a lot of uh, root that has grown into lechuza pond so let's let's hope this will help and this one over here is the invariegated bella it also received too much light inside the millsbo cabinet and also it has so many mealy bugs so i just need to take it out instead of being the mealy bug bomb inside the millsbo cabinet i have washed it two times already and i can't really see any um mealy bugs anymore but i will try not to touch it as much so then i don't spread i'm gonna wash my hand before touching another hoya after this one but uh this is growing i think i think the tips are growing and bella shouldn't be a difficult one uh when it comes to humidity and light it's just too much light could be a problem okay wash my hand let's move on to the hoya session over here let's start with the top over there this one is hoya symbolis another one that i have chopped up and put it as a separate copy or dupe it started off um as i think of three four uh, stem with maybe 10 12 nodes there and now after five months it become a full pot and this one over here it is hoya latensis it um i have a, a, another clone or i would say i have another dupe inside the meals bow cabinet i kept this one outside because it's relatively large and it looks pretty healthy at the time when i received it so i just kept it there i think in the beginning it just have very few strand 
uh, maybe four to five strand and and now you can see it is a full pot um, all the way drilling down. I'm very happy about this Hoya because it's I haven't heard, or maybe it's not as uncommon, but I look so forward to see the yellow flower. This one down here is actually two plants that I potted in the same hanging pot to save space. The one on the left here, could you tell the name? Just from looking at the, I guess something just dropped. Leaf here. This one is Hoya IR26. I put it out because it has fully grown out of the Mills Bow cabinet and um, I think it is definitely mature enough to go for a more um, less caring environment but it is very beautiful. You can see that the sun stressing it's not just red but it kind of have that splashy coloration and if we look at the ones under the sun you see that it's the red, it's very blush-like and um, the undertone of the leaf is lime green. It's a very beautiful coloration. Then I can actually admire it when I'm sitting in my couch and uh, could be better when it comes to more that I can see it grow instead of just stacking it inside the meals bow cabinet. And then on the side, this one is a larger one, but the coloration is quite similar. It's also pinkish blush color. This one here, could you tell? This one is NS050055. It has very beautiful sun stressing coloration. This one here, because I placed just underneath the grow light. That's why the sun stressing, I would say it's a bit too much. And this one, I would say it's okay, like that kind of green, cream pinkish color. And the coloration under the sun is just very, it's very cute. It's very beautiful, baby pink color. And these ones are not sun stressed. It's, and then you can see that the leaf it's um, more on a lighter green coloration that's why when it comes to the sun stressing color it's more baby pink color it is so pretty and two of these put together doesn't look too odd i would say it uh, complement each other very well then let's have a slight tilt over here this one is Hoya Croniana Super Silver. You can see that the silver, it's very shiny under the sun. And this is not an expensive plant when I got it a year plus ago. And now it has grown not just a full pot, but it goes all the way, all the way, all the way, all the way down. To where I sit. So it is an extremely fast grower and very, very pretty. It also blooms quite a lot. You see that the peduncle there. But now entering uh, the autumn season, it has stopped pushing out new peduncle or refilling the existing peduncle. And uh, this one over here is Lacunosa. You can tell from the elongated leaf shape, it is a huge 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 plant and it has also stopped uh, pushing out flower which is not a bad idea as you can see there are so many peduncle in this plant I constantly need to do a lot of washing in my couch just because it has too many peduncle fell off or flower fell off then this one over here this one is the very beautiful coloration Hoya Rosita. It is still pushing out new buds um, here and then, but today um, all of them has dropped off. But you can see that it has many, many peduncle from the plant itself. And then pen down over here. This is the flowering machine currently. This one is Hoya SPAFF Botonier. I have stopped counting how many peduncle and flower it has currently pushing out. Um, 
I roughly guess maybe 20 plus. As you can see, all of these buds are non-stop rebudding and also new. As you can see, this one is new. This one. And uh, all non-stop push uh, pushing out. I remember one time Doug mentioned that sometime he needs to chop the peduncle. It feels wrong, but I understand him because um, it's just very, it's, it's sometimes just too much because it's also very sticky when it comes to the nectar. So this entire pot will just have so many drop off of flower here. So let's see. This one over here is Hoya Matilde. It has a flower before uh, over here. Well, you didn't see wrongly. It just grows vertically upwards, but um, it is very, very healthy. And I would say all of these three um, hanging plants actually grow together. Then on the side, on the top here, we have Hoya Croniana. This one has been a very, very good bloomer throughout the spring, summer, probably a month ago. Um, it has been blooming so much, but it has stopped after the temperature has dropped. Um, but I would say it's still a very healthy plant, just that for blooming, it has paused. You can see that it has, some of them have some splashes, some of them are darker if you look into the ones on the top there i suspect the darker one is because it does not have as bright direct light on the top but i'm not 100 percent sure the one below it it is hoya rebecca you can see that the leaf shape could be very similar to uh lacunosa but the very pretty thing about rebecca is it has that um, sun stress pattern of sunrise, but in a much smaller size. If you take a close up look here, the veins are very prominent and also the pointy leaves looks very cute. It also have a bunch of flower throughout spring and summer. This one may be a much more clear some stress in coloration. Um, as you can see, there are so many peduncle that has grown multiple times. But again, similar to other Hoyas that generally bloom so much, it has stopped um, pushing out new flowers on either existing peduncle or new peduncle. Well, actually that's Wrong. There's a new peduncle growing here. Oh, let's see. Right, let's move to the left-hand side here. This is another Rebecca that I potted separately. Mm, I also have this one. This one is Sipitigensis, but Sipitigensis uh, here has very, very different leaf shape than the one that I put it in the Millsboat cabinet. The leaf shape is much larger. As you can see, this one. These leaves grown in the Millsboat cabinet, but these ones grown outside of the Millsboat cabinet. So um, maybe in the Millsboat cabinet, due to the high uh, light condition, it pushed out very, very small leaf. Leave your comment down below if you have similar observation. When the light is stronger, the leaf size is smaller. So far, that's what I have observed for most of my Hoyas. And um, I also have another Kentiana variegated over here. I need to be extra careful because this one fell many, many times. I'm, I'm traumatized with this. Um, but it is growing slowly, probably is because it doesn't receive as much light as the ones in the front, because they kind of block the light. But um, I don't have enough space, so it has to bear with it. Over here, it is a huge Hoya sunrise. I showed this uh, in the um, a RCM plant export uh, unboxing and also 
update. This has fully grown into a huge, 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 huge plant with so many peduncle. You can see that the leaf is very, very sun stressed. The vein is not just the midrib on the side, but the entire leaf is filled with veins, particularly when there is sun stress on the leaf. These ones are leaves that um, grown after I have received it, but this is also leaf that has grown after I have received it. So it just varies so much. If you take a look at these two side by side, it is from the same plant, same genetic, but just very different sizing. To me, I prefer smaller leaf. You can have more space for more of them. Larger leaf has much more detail on the leaf um, kind of detail, but I mean, the smaller one are so cute too. I like the smaller one. And then move on below here. This one is the huge Cutisei that I have from last year. It has pushed out so much strand of uh, growth all the way, all the way down. Um, I am looking forward um, to have this flower one day, but I heard Curtisii is not that easy to flower, even though I give it direct sunlight. And also if you look into the coloration, it is very sun stressed. The coloration is more like a maroon purple color already. So let me know again in the comment down below if you know the trick to flower this courtesy I would be great. This one below here is Hoya Lucardar Asiana. I'll try avoid touching it because this is a major uh, mealy bug infestation plant. I washed it so many times and I also spray a lot of alcohol, sometimes even 95% alcohol. The mealy bugs still exist, but I think think, yeah, as far as I said, God, you see it, it's just there. I'm gonna remove all of these fluffy thing again. Well, I hope when the weather turn a bit colder, the rapid speed of reproduction of mealybugs will reduce. But anyway, the mealybug didn't really stop the growth of this Leucodariciana. Originally, it only had this bunch, but after the spring and summer season, it pushed out a lot of new strand. So yeah, it is growing, even though there are so many mealybugs attacking it. Removing this right after this video, I will do that for sure. And let's have a look at this one over here. I also have another plate of Yes. This one, there's a peduncle. What is this from? All right, this one is from this here is David Kamingii with yellow flower, and uh, it is growing very nicely. Um, it also pushed out this one, and if you look into this one here, this one is the Bacuenses that I placed outside. It is uh, pushing out some new bud on the existing peduncle again and the David Kamingii, some more new buds are forming in the existing peduncle. And uh, this one over here is Hoya verticinoides. It looks very similar to Ingularia, but I got this and it sold to me as uh, uh, verticinoides. I wonder if that is a bug. No, it is not. It's just the node. Uh, and then I have a huge plant over there. This one here is Hoya Low Hairy. This one, you can see that the growth, it's exploded and it just grow all the way up and grow all the way behind, even go through the Thai constellation. But uh, yeah, I look forward to this one to potentially flower. This was supposed to be a peduncle. Let me just try to focus. This is a peduncle that pushed out super long, but 
it never do anything more than that. I also have another one in somewhere, but again, that one is not growing either. Not continuously pushing out peduncles. So let's see. Then we'll move on to these ones here. Look at the freckles of this philodendron Dean McDowell. It's so pretty. And then you also have this one over here. It is the philodendron Gloriosa. Let's take a close up look of this large leaf over here. It is probably 60 centimeters large. And with regard to Dean McDowell, the leaf size is just insane. I think it is probably the same size as this largest leaf over here. And let's have a look at the new leaf that is pushing out for Dean McDowell. A big one is coming up and um, there's actually a new growth point of that cutting over there. And uh, I'm very happy to see that because there should have another growth point and um, it will turn out to have three growth point of this big choreosome over here. Then we move on to this one over here. This is the new plant that I got from Ben's Jungle, Philodendron SP Columbia or Philodendron Silver. I'm very happy that three of the leaf that I showed you in the video still healthily existed. And also it is healthy when it comes to the uh, acclimation. The acclimation process did not really take a very um, strong hit for the plant. And I am told uh, in one of the uh, comment down in that video saying that this looks a bit yellow than the one that another person has purchased from Ben's Jungle. You can see that the vein is very prominent. The midrib is darker and also the vein on the side is darker. However, the leaf itself, it's more on a lighter green coloration. But the happy thing that I want to show you is it is pushing out a new leaf. Finally, I was hoping that this will be a bit sooner, but it's better to be late than not coming. Look at this. It started, I would say it started swallowing this up since a week ago. I was suspecting that something is pushing out, but I didn't see anything on the tip. So I was thinking maybe it's just illusion. But then after, I think around five days, I start seeing something trying to push out from the caterpillar. Now we can see that obviously a leaf will be pushed out soon. So I have potted it um, into Lechuza Pom and I potted it in this uh, pot that I have also mentioned to you. It is really good for Chlora. You can check out my video talking about Lechuza planters. This one is uh, Delta. Um, I think this is Delta 10. So yeah, there you go. The philodendron SP is happy. And I'm happy about that with the new growth point here. The Gloriosum is just insane. Then we move on to this one over here, the Obliqua Peru. There is no significant growth uh, yet. However, I think since two weeks ago, it started pushing out these side shoot. I don't know if those ones are just um, kind of like additional tendrils that it push out, but those ones looks like it's going to have some sort of growth. But yesterday, I saw this. You see that knuckle over there? I'm pretty sure that is a piece of root that is attached to a new leaf. 
So in the middle, I believe they will have some new growth pushing out. You can't see the new leaf yet, but um, I am pretty sure something is going to come out from the middle part there. I'm very excited about this because I just keep it in the normal room environment, I think since two weeks ago. And even the environment is pretty cold, I would say, maybe around 15 to 20. It still managed to push out quite significant growth. So I'm excited to see this growing. Thank you very much for staying until now. I wish you enjoy the content as much as I do filming them. In this video, if you have any specific plants that you want to learn more about, please leave your comment down below so then we can share experience further. And if you have any of the plant that you really enjoy seeing them growth or any of the thing that you spotted during autumn time in your houseplant collection, also leave a comment down below and we can learn from each other. If you like this type of content and you don't want to miss out next time when I post it similar content, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you won't miss out next time. If you want to support me and also telling me that this is the type of content you enjoy watching, don't forget to hit that like button and share this video with your friends. Until next time, I wish everyone is enjoying autumn season and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!